Now in a previous video, I replaced the rear brake drums, the shoes and the wheel cylinders on this Smart for Two. In today's video, I'm going to be turning my attention to the front of the car and changing the front brake pads and discs. So before we get underway, the reason why I'm changing these is because there is a considerable lip here on the disc and it is causing a rubbing sound uh, when I'm driving along without the brakes being applied. The pads are by no means worn out, there's plenty of meat left on them. Um, ignore this corrosion, this, just this surface corrosion here is just where I washed the car and put it away in the garage and didn't really drive it, so that rubs off. That's not the reason for changing them, it's this lip and the noise that I, I don't really like. Um, so it's easy just to change these out, they're not expensive. I'm going to do that today. So here are the parts of the job. So I've got a set of brake pads here. They're Bosch. There's the part number for anyone who may be interested. I got these from Autodoc. Took a chance really just after my last experience where the brake shoes arrived with chunks out of them. I thought, well, the prices were good. Hopefully lightning doesn't strike twice. But we'll find out in a sec because I'm unboxing this as we speak. So here we go one set of brake pads for the front they all look okay no chunks out of these they don't come with that much meat on them to start with to be honest but they all seem intact Let's see what else this comes with oh yeah we get the bolts too with a little bit of loctite on them which is good so the brake discs Phoebe Bilstein, I was particularly happy with the brake drums last time because they came with a, a coating, a painted coating, which means they won't deteriorate too quickly. Here we go, here's the part number. I know which one's best for anyone who's interested. Let's see what we've got in here. And here we are, the coating that we had on the brake drums. It's on the hub of the brake disc as well, which is good. That'll keep it looking nice for longer. Yeah, what more can I say? It's a brake disc. And it's always a good idea to undo the reservoir cap because when I push the pistons back in, that level will need to rise slightly and I want it to be able to. So the car is on a jack with an axle stand supporting it. The wheel is off, 15 millimeter wheel bolts on these cars. First of all, just slowly allowing that piston to be retracted and loosen these 13 millimeter bolts that hold the hydraulic part of the caliper to the caliper carrier. Allowing this to come free. can now remove the brake pads. We've got this little tab here. The idea of these is that this makes contact with the brake disc before the pad wears down to the metal, therefore alerting you by making a strange ringing sound as you drive along, a scraping sound. Now some vehicles you can undo this screw and remove this brake disc without removing the caliper carrier. It depends on the design and the construction. On this car, however, this caliper carrier has to come off first before we can remove the brake disc. So to remove the caliper carrier, you have two bolts here. On this car, they're 18 millimeter. So I use an impact socket and a brake bar, and we undo those two. And once these have both been undone, caliper carrier comes away and the advantage of having it off the car is it's way easier to clean it because this will need to be very thoroughly cleaned where the brake pads contact this. The little screw here that holds the brake disc in place is a T30. And once this is removed the brake disc can come off. 
when the brake disc is out of the way it's a good opportunity to check for any coarseness in the wheel bearing here and this one feels absolutely fine this back plate here can be replaced as a separate component they're a little bit prone to corrosion this one's a little bit scabby but it's not bad enough to need replacing sometimes this can get distorted and it can actually rub against the brake disc causing a scraping noise it's just one thing to be aware of so it's always a good idea not to distort this in any way it's a good idea to clean up this surface to ensure that the brake disc can sit flush against it when it's refitted I also like to apply a little bit of copper slip around here with my favourite toothbrush and this prevents corrosion. So here we have a new brake disc. These come with a protective coating, usually in the form of a light oil and it's really important that this is cleaned off or it will impregnate the new brake pads which would be a very bad idea. So a bit of brake cleaner, both sides. Give it a good wipe. The oil is applied to brake discs to keep them protected from corrosion during transit. And it's always a good idea to compare old and new because part suppliers do make mistakes and it's far better to discover this before you fit components than after. Time to refit the new brake disc. Note the hole for the grub screw. Don't over tighten those, they're only small. Now turning attention to this caliper carrier. These are the parts that need to be really clean, so I'll be scraping off any brake dust and muck getting those really bright. You may wish to wear a mask for this. It kicks up a lot of dust. And this is how it should look when it's done. Really clean. Smooth. No corrosion. You'll never get rid of it all because it gets a bit pitted sometimes but that's the best I can get this. It's a really good opportunity to check as well that these sliders do that very thing slide uh, there is a, a special silicon kind of lubricant that you can use on these pins um, if necessary I've checked these they've got plenty of uh, plenty of lubricant in there and they slide beautifully it's always best to be careful with brakes it's a very bad idea to use any greases or lubricants that were not designed for braking components as they need to be high melting point and not end up all over your brake linings and discs and things so I'm now going to apply some copper slip to these surfaces to ensure that the brake pads can slide freely. I like to apply some Loctite to the bolts that hold the caliper carrier to the hub and it's important that everyone checks their own torque settings and torque this bolt to the manufacturer's recommended setting. So re-tighten the caliper carrier bolts by hand initially and then fully tighten them and set them to the correct torque setting. In the case of my vehicle it's said to be 115 Newton meters but it's important everybody checks their own. It's important to have a good look at the brake caliper, the hydraulic element of it. Just check it for leaks, uh, make sure there's nothing leaking around the rubber boot there and do check that the piston has returned fully which this one pretty much has some vehicles have a plastic piston here which is very easily damaged so it's just one to be wary of so time to refit the brake pads now some people absolutely plaster the back of their brake pads with copper slip or plaster lube I don't believe in doing that there is this coating here and it's here for a reason this uh, is probably as good as anti-slip as you need I don't personally do it that way, but some people do. So I've compared old and new. 
definitely the same dimensionally and we've got the a little wear low brake pad warning scraper thing there so that simply slides in there and the other pad there and now refit the brake caliper important to make sure that the springs in here are both placed under tension by the caliper and that none of the springs are protruding from here which can happen like to apply a little bit more copper slip around here so that the wheel doesn't end up corroded to this hub here over time. Not that my wheels stay on long enough for that to ever be a problem so I'm always playing about with my cars. So all done. I just like to check the brake disc for any little bits of grease or muck and just spot clean them. Wheel back on, time to repeat the same on the other side. So the other side's uh, successfully done, uh, no problems found this side either, everything uh, went pretty much the same as the offside front here on the near side. Now it's really important that you pump the brake pedal a few times after this job before you attempt to go anywhere. Um, as the pedal will go straight to the floor for the first few brake applications. So if you do take the car out for a drive without doing that, you'll be in for quite a shock when you go to stop the car. And last of all, check the brake fluid. If the brake pads are really worn and you have to push the piston in a long way, sometimes it can increase the level of the brake fluid to the point where you have to actually drain a little bit off, but it's okay in this case, as it's only very slight. Just go easy on the brakes for the first uh, 50 to 100 miles because they uh, will take a while to reach their normal performance levels. Uh, it takes less time for them to bed in if you've done pads and discs and obviously more time if new pads have to adjust into old grooved discs. So that is pretty much it on this car in terms of brakes anyway. It's had brakes at the front taken care of, the back, it's had the brake fluid changed so everything should be good for the foreseeable future. Hope you enjoyed the video, do feel free to like and subscribe. I'll see you again in a video soon. Thank you and goodbye.